We're in chapter number nine in the four priorities, and we're talking about the whole subject of uh, sexual control, a very interesting subject. But listen to this. A few years ago, a 12-year-old boy named Michael was swimming in a small pond near his family's home in Florida. Paddling along with a snorkel and mask, head underwater, Michael didn't know that an 11-foot, 400-pound alligator was bearing down upon him. The creature lunged for the boy's head. When its jaws snapped shut, the mask and snorkel were torn away. Miraculously, Michael's head came free from the gator's mouth. He began swimming frantically toward shore with a hungry alligator following in his wake. The boy's cousin, Jill, standing on the shoreline, screamed. That alerted Michael's mother. She raced to the bank just as her son was reaching the shore. Then the gator clamped onto Michael's legs. His mother grabbed his hands and pulled. A fierce tug of war pursued, and finally she won out. Clutching Michael's hands in a death grip, his mother pulled with superhuman strength. Suddenly, inexplicably, the alligator let go and returned to the depths. Michael's mother then dragged her son up to the bank to safety. You know, I thought about that, and, and what a dramatic, dramatic thing. But, you know, there's another uh, beast out there lurking to grab hold of men and women that can wreak havoc in a person's life. And that whole area, that whole beast that we're pointing to is this, this area of our human sexuality. You know, one of the things that I think would be good for us to remember is that God is the one that thought sex up. And the scripture says, the Bible says that everything that God created was good. And so therefore, uh, what he has created in the area of our human sexuality is good. But how we use that gift is very important. And I think one of the things that uh, we didn't mention a whole lot in the chapter is this whole area of control. Uh, I was thinking, you know, uh, you know, when you're really hot and sweaty, what do you really want? Well, you know, you like to have either a cold glass of water, you don't drink a, a glass of syrup, and if you're uh, hot and sweaty, you also want a good shower, a cool shower. Um, what in the world could possibly be wrong with water? I mean, have you ever seen anybody protesting water, carrying a little placard saying, down with water? Well, you ever been in a flood? You see, when you've got water contained in a faucet that you can turn on or off, then it works for you. But if that water is out of control and creates a flood and destroys life, it's a bad thing. And so again, this great gift of our human sexuality, God created it. He said it's good, but he has set the parameters of how it should be used, when it should be used, and the purposes for which it be, should be used. So what I want to focus on in my couple little minutes here today is talking about six timeless truths about sexual sin. And hopefully these might be helpful to you. And I'm, I'm going to go through these quickly uh, and want you to think about it. The first one is anyone can commit sexual sin. I don't care how spiritual you are. I don't care how much the Bible you've memorized. I don't care, you know, how long you've been a, a follower of Jesus Christ. Um, I don't care how moral you appear, uh, anyone can commit sexual sins and step out of bounds in this area. And it seems like everywhere we turn, whether you're advertising toothpaste or a tire, there is some allurement there with a physical body trying to get you to buy that toothpaste or buy that tire by looking at that slick chick. And again, or I guess it could be a handsome guy. So anyone could commit sexual sin. Number two. Past success is no guarantee of future success. Don't underestimate the power of passion. At a down moment, at a, at a time in your life when you may be going through some difficulty, uh, often that can be the area we look to uh, as kind of a, a reservoir, uh, a, a, a place where we can find some relief. And so you've got to be very, very careful about that. Uh, don't underestimate the power of passion. Three, sin, and sin in any area, and especially this area, is a choice. Nobody is forcing us to uh, go out of bounds, outside the parameters God has set for this great gift and the use of it. Sin's a choice, and we make that choice. Number four, immorality always brings consequences. 
Now, you know, our sin, any sin, but particularly in this area, it may not go public. But there are other people who know about that, uh, that sin. For example, God knows, you know, and uh, it could also impact your home. It impacts your life, your work. And obviously, it impacts your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Uh, let me give you an example of that from Psalm 31. And I'm reading from the Living Bible. And you remember the story about David and Bathsheba. And I think we mentioned that in chapter 9. But after he made that gigantic blunder and all the details of it, this is what he said in Psalm 31, beginning around verse 9. O Lord, have mercy on me in my anguish. My eyes are red from weeping. My health is broken from sorrow. I am pining away with grief. My years are shortened, drained away because of sadness. And then he makes this statement. He says, my sins have sapped my strength. And that's what happens with any sin. And this sin is one of those sins that will sap your strength, sap your energy, sap your creativity uh, if we step out of bounds. So we've got to be careful about that. Um, I think also often we don't see the potential awfulness of this sin, of stepping out of bounds. Uh, the greatest, uh, most poignant illustration I've ever read on that subject comes from uh, the great Englishman, Malcolm Muckeridge, was the, who was the editor of the British magazine Punch for many years uh, and, a, and a respected journalist nationally and internationally. But let me, let me relate this story to you. Muckeridge tells a story in his autobiography, The Wasted Years, that beautifully illustrates what we're talking about here. Muggeridge had been faithful to his wife, he said, for the length of their marriage. But he carried the thought, and it always begins with a thought, in the back of his mind that if the right opportunity ever presented itself, he would be intimate with another woman just for the experience. That opportunity seemed to present itself when he was in India teaching journalism far away from his wife and family. Muggeridge said that he, early each morning he rose and went swimming in the Ganges River. On one such morning, he saw a woman bathing herself in the river, quite a distance away. This is my moment, he thought. I'm a wealthy Englishman. She's a poor Indian. What could it hurt? Who will, who will ever know? As he began to swim upstream to her, he struggled not just against the water, but against the current of his conscience. Malcolm, a voice inside him said, don't do it. But then another voice countered, this is your chance. It's now or never. He continued to swim toward her staying underneath the water until he was only a few feet away. When he surfaced, he was, not she, who experienced the shock of a lifetime. he came up out of the water, looked into the eyes of a woman who was a leper. Her nose, he said, was eaten away. There were sores and white blotches all over her skin, and the ends of her fingers were gone. She looked more like an animal than a human being. Immediately he thought, what a wretched woman she is. But almost at the same moment, he was overwhelmed with a devastating truth, what a wretched man I am. Though he never expressed it in his autobiography, probably came to this basic understanding of this. Physical leprosy is crippling and terminal, but spiritual leprosy is deadly and eternal. So that's a rather sobering illustration of what can happen uh, if we go out of bounds or attempt to go out of bounds in this area of human sexuality. Number five, if you need help in this area, go get it. There are a lot of wonderful, reliable people out there that, that love Christ, that have expertise in this area. Get help if you need it. Number six, if you've messed up, you got to remember that God will forgive you. I tell you, one of the greatest passages uh, in this area of forgiveness comes from Isaiah chapter number one, verse 18. And I want to leave you with this. This is what the scripture says. Come, let's talk this over, says the Lord. No matter how deep the stain of your sins, I can take it out and make you as clean as freshly fallen snow. Even if you are stained as red as crimson, I can make you as white as as wool. 
What a deal. What a God. What a Savior. You think about that real hard. Thanks for listening to the Four Priorities Podcast. This podcast, along with the Four Priorities book, are designed to aid, support, and encourage you in your work of making disciples. If you haven't purchased your copy of the Four Priorities, you can do so at www.thetolstongroup.com. Please subscribe to this podcast and follow John on social media for more resources and teaching. See you next time on the Four Priorities Podcast.